Welcome guys, today we'll be looking at reading and writing to custom smart contracts uh, on the blockchain. So similar to that of a Web3 wallet or desktop video that I made, we'll be looking at the exact same functions. Uh, this is the contract manager here that holds our token contract from Solidity or Remix, our token ABI from Solidity or Remix, and then my own custom RPC node just for more reliability when fetching data. It's like way faster. So first things first, we'll look at the script you should be able to identify this from a previous video as well because it's quite literally the exact same function. Um, this function here to fetch the balance of our custom token from that smart contract is exactly the same as the desktop code. It works universally between Web3 Wallet and Web3 GL. So if you're building for those two platforms, usually your reads won't have to change. That's pretty good. So we can leave this one here and I'll show you guys in a second what this looks like when it all works. For our write method here, we um, have a slightly different, a slightly different function. Now, I just want to make make it clear that you can use um, the this method up here or this function here. This works just fine with Web3GL. However, it is still going to take you through the signing page, and you might not want to sign on your browser. It might look unprofessional. You might not like it. Um, in which case, we can resort to sending a transaction. Um, using a native Web3 GL method or function. Let's go through it. We can see that we're going to be doing a transfer. So we're calling a standard transfer function. This is the amount of tokens we want to send, including our decimals. This is the account that we want to send those tokens to. This doesn't have to be hard coded. You can grab it from the player prefs. Um, our method, yes, our ABI being from the contract manager. So if you're looking at the token ABI here, uh, the contract in itself being the contract uh, and then for the array of arguments we take our account and our amount and uh, we put it in a uh, an array so an object array here and then we serialize our arguments uh, we serialize that object sorry as our arguments um, this is kind of just like a really convenient way of making sure that the information gets passed to the blockchain correctly um, and it's just yeah it's super straightforward uh, our value is our on-chain currency. So if you're on, say, Binance mainnet, that might be BNB or Ethereum if you're using the Ethereum mainnet. But because it's not a payable function or anything like that, we'll leave that at zero. Uh, we'll leave a gas price and gas limit empty so that MetaMask can calculate that for us automatically. And then we try to send our method. So we'll try to send the transaction. If it's a success, it should respond to the transaction hash. It will tell us on screen that our tokens had been transferred successfully um, and it should be green. Otherwise, if it fails for whatever reason, like if the user cancels and whatnot, um, we'll just debug that and it should tell us what went wrong. Uh, so yeah, let's go have a look and see. Uh, but before I do, actually, you know what? Let's go through this, this fetch balance as well, just to be sure. So if you're on Web3GL and you haven't watched the, the desktop or Web3 wallet video, we can just go through this as well. Similar thing as the, the actual transfer, except this is a read. We're reading information from the blockchain. We're not writing to it. So the method is balance off. So a standard balance off function or method on the on, on Solidity side. The owner argument, which is the only argument Solidity side required for a balance off of a standard ERC20 token um, is our connected account at the time. Um, our RPC provider is our RPC provider, which is found here. And then we create our contract data by specifying our token ABI, our token contract, and our provider. And then the data object that we're passing through is a contract call. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into call data because that's more desktop side of things, but the contract or call is universal, like I mentioned before, which is excellent when you kind of want to deal with um, two different platforms and you don't want to muck around with a code too. In here, in this data object here, very similar to the Web3GL um, uh, function down there, we pass the argument here. If your function has no arguments, you can just leave it blank. That should be pretty good, that should be all good. And then it should return our data object, which we then print just to check for sanity. <laughs> uh, and then this here is optional. This is purely optional. This is me just sanitizing things a little bit so that it's not just a random long number. Um, and we uh, we just make it look nice and tidy. And I'll show you guys what this looks like when we debug it versus what it looks like on screen. So let's actually go to the build, which I've already got set up here. The login screen might look very uh, familiar from the uh, login video. 
But let's go and connect our wallet. So boom, shebang, it connected. It should take us to the next scene. We'll give it a moment to fetch that data. And then there we go. That's our balance for that contract address that we specified earlier within the contract manager, well, along with our connected wallet. Now, if I go F12 and we'll just have a look at the console, see this number down here, right here? That number is what it looks like when you don't sanitize the end result. So in here, because we only have 49,000 tokens, which we can actually, I think we can, yeah, there you go. So 49788. So actually my rounding is actually not as great as um, I would have wanted it to be, but in short though, oh wait, no, apologies. That's my Kronos testnet token. So that is actually scary close to that. But there you go. So we have 49970 and we can see 49970. If we didn't sanitize that using this here, where we pass and all that sort of stuff, then you would get a large number like this one down here, which doesn't look neat or accurate. Moving on though, now that we've read a function or we've used a read method from Solidity to read information from the blockchain, let's write, let's transfer some tokens, right? So we can go transfer. There's our 10 strange tokens that we're transferring. We can look at the gas and stuff, or we can confirm a transaction, in which case our tokens have been transferred successfully. There's our transaction has just down here. We'll give it a moment because I'm pretty sure MetaMask will confirm whether or not the transaction is successful. There we go. Nice. The timing of that. Um, okay, that won't work though because the testnet or the explorer doesn't quite work for me. Um, but if we go to MetaMask, give it a moment. There we go. There's our tokens that we so successfully sent. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you guys need any help, just pop into Discord and we can um, have a chat about it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.